go, welcome to my third test drive of the Fiat 500 electric today. Um, I tested it once in city with one dealership in Norwich and I've tested it on a very efficient route um, on my own. And now I've got Susan in the car, my wife, and even crackers in the back seat. So he's, he's laying down like a really good boy. With this convertible model, um, there isn't any hatchback boot, so there's no space for cracker, so that doesn't work. But the rear seats, he's quite comfortable sat down there. He hasn't popped up to say hello yet, but he might do along the journey. Well, take two. Um, this is my third test drive in the Mini, <laughs> in the Fiat 500 electric, sorry. Um, I just started videoing a little while ago and my phone cut out, ran out of battery. My third test drive. The first was a city drive, an accompanied test drive with one dealership. And I explained that there was a very odd reason why I ended up at the wrong dealership. Went to the other one and got a longer test drive. Somebody actually cancelled their afternoon test drive, so I've got it for the entire day almost. So yeah, I've done the efficiency test and we got up to 5.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And I do think I was driving slower than I did when I tested the other cars. So 5.7 is the best you're probably going to get in any form of normal driving, even city driving, which is not as good as the Ionic, the Kona, the e Nero, or the Mini Electric. So the efficiency in this is not quite as good. Now I think this car though will suit Susan in many ways. Um, I think she will like this more than the Mini Electric because of, um, I think the seats are less sporty, she'll like that. The seats are higher up, she'll enjoy that. The window windscreen space is wider I think visibility is very good I think she'll like the, the feel of that but there is one aspect that I think she's not gonna like and uh, I'm not gonna tell you what that is I'm gonna wait and see whether she actually says let's just, that, let's just wait until this car comes past is that the bit I've already pointed out <laughs> <laughs> yeah what is it that already within the first couple of minutes Susan that you don't like about this car <laughs> as a passenger it's like riding a bucking Bronco <laughs> now what other car have you experienced that in the BMW i3 <laughs> <laughs> so there you go I said it in the other video that um, I recorded without Susan and I was absolutely right this is very on or off. It's very digital. Um, gauging it on this mode is not very good at all. But let's see whether this works, because I suspect if I put it into normal mode, Susan might think that it's changed a little bit. So let's see whether you think this new mode, mode that we're in now is any better. Well, we're on a different sort of road. <laughs> start to get a feel for it. Now, well, what I've noticed is there's no region, it coasts. So it's not yes, jerking on and off. I suppose that that's... And that's your bucking bronco. What it feels like. So have I turned the bucking bronco off now? Have I tamed it? Do you think? Is it better? It's more like a fat cob. <laughs> A fat cob. What's, yeah. what's a cob yeah. in, in non-horse speak? A chunky, <laughs> a chunky, choppy individual. Right. I'm not a seasick. I'm not reaching for the sick bag, put it that way, right. in this mode. Okay. So it's slightly better. So the car's more pleasurable for passengers, which is exactly what I said earlier, in normal mode where you've got no regen and you're just coasting. Where if you put it into regen mode, and we'll just do that, we'll put it into range mode, Was it to start with? In range mode, so in eco, in oh, right, okay. regen mode. Yeah. Have you just stripped it back just now? I have, yeah. You can tell the difference straight away. Yeah, there, there you go. So an independent view, <laughs> you can feel the difference in the driving quality of ride between normal mode and range mode because of the regen and how, I would say sharp it is, but as we've explained... In the I'd say sharp! <laughs> <laughs> but Passenger. it's only 30 kilowatts sharp. That's maximum regen. And that's not as much as the Mini. Mm. So it's not about how much regen there is in Sharp, it's about how it's programmed for how smoothly it delivers it. And in the Mini, you modulate the throttle to get coasting mode. Clearly in this sphere, you just can't quite reach that coasting mode by modulating the throttle. It's, it's either doing one or the other, it's either accelerating or it's braking on regen. What do you think of the interior? 
How does it look and feel? Have, have a look. Have a look oh, around. It's, it's beautiful. It's very chic. It, and again, like the i3, it has a beautiful interior, lovely mod cons, but it's just very uncomfortable as a passenger. Okay, so what? Have a look and what are the things that you like the look of? Um, I like this sort of waffle um, dash. Uh, might be a nightmare to dust in time, but um, I do too. Have you noticed, like the fence? Look at the nuts of different line yeah, the all line, the way yeah, across. The lines really, really nice. <laughs> <laughs> what mode are we in? <laughs> We're in the regen mode. Do you want me to put it in the soft mode? <laughs> okay. So we, we've got to drive it in normal mode without any regen <laughs> before Susan hurls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I bet you don't get that on James and Kate's video, do you? <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously not not putting this on. It is bloody uncomfortable. I'm not supposed to say that much. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. hmm. So what do you think to these switches? So have a have Ugh. a flick on of these switches because they're the heating controls. You can do it from the you can do it from the digital dash, but these are toggles, so you can go on and off. They seem rather and, far they're far away. The speed is going up. Yeah. You can change toggling them up and down. So a bit like the mini ones. What do you think to that though? They look right, don't they? I quite like this and this and this and the charging here. Yeah, no, nice. it is. It's very nice. It flows. And then this piece, look at the yeah. grey on it. No, it's been very. Oops. So because we've got no regen, <laughs> you have to actually use the brake pedal. I'm not used to doing that. So we've only done five miles so far. We're at 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Let's turn the temperature up in the car. We don't need it that cold. Susan yeah. doesn't like it cold. Susan, too, well, Susan doesn't like it really hot either, especially when I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> Let's get to a smoother, bigger road quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Country Sorry. And I don't force me to stare, stare at toggles and buttons and everything because I'm, I'm having trouble staying <laughs> non nauseous. Have a quick listen. What can you hear? Uh, there's a buzz in the background. Yeah, whine. Yes. Is that supposed to be there? What's that supposed to be? It's like a whistly whine, isn't it? It's just a constant drone. Yeah. Do you think you have that in the mini electric when you hear it? No. Yeah, see, I, I've noticed the same as well. That There's some noises on this car that aren't, aren't quite pleasant. Um, but is that because the cabin is so quiet inside, you notice them? Well, your ears are your super sensitive anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can notice all those things. But that's what I'm here to do, isn't it? To test the car and to give you an opinion, good or bad, of what I notice and what I see. And you, you may or may not notice that. It, if might, you have the it car. might be. It might be nicer. To, it might be nicer to drive, but based on uh, being a passenger in it, I wouldn't. And it looks lovely. Yeah. But um, so going out for a drive, you and me as our car, this or the mini. Mini every time, and yet the yeah. Mini's harder, firmer, sportier. No, the Mini is just more comfortable. Um, this may look prettier, but um, the Mini is a is a more comfortable drive over a long distance. Very interesting story. I know this is a Fiat 500 review, but um, Mini Electric um, <laughs> information here. I had my brother around the other day, and he's a He's a stalwart Audi, BMW, Porsche type man. He, he loves his German cars and he hates the idea of electric cars. Um, he likes big V8s and noisy, rumbly things and hates the idea of having to charge and range and all those sort of things. So he's, he's, he's really, you know, one of the challenges for converting to electric cars. And I took him out for a, a drive in my Mini Electric and the first thing he said to me was, this interior is really nice. And then he looked around at the seat and he said, this seat feels brilliant. I can tell instantly it's really, really nice. And he said he'd just bought his wife a, a small Audi and spent £30,000 on it. So he's trying to be a bit smug, telling me he'd spent £30,000 on it. And then he said, well, go on, then how much is this then as an electric car then? Because I'd already shown him the performance and he knows the quality of the interior and the features. It, it's a, you know, it's not a, not a cheap car. And when I told him the entry level is 24 and a half and mine was 27 and a half, he suddenly said, damn, I could have had one of those and put solar panels on the house instead for the price of the freaking Audi. 
he said, I'm really quite tempted to go and trade it back in. And that's the first time I've ever heard my brother say anything positive about electric cars or that it might work for him. And lo and behold, it was the Mini. The Mini, when you test drive it, just gives you a wow factor and it might just be the sort of cars we like. But now you're hearing Susan's thoughts as well. Your first thoughts in the test drive of this aren't as positive. Where the Mini, even though it's got a lower range, is just a winner in so many ways. Anyway, back to the back to the Fiat 500. Sorry about the uh, the Mini interlude. I do like the sat nav screen. Oh, <laughs> so you just turned it off. Yeah. The, the sat nav screen. Oh, there is. Oh, that's good. Um, the sat nav screen is much better than the Mini. Mini is yeah. bigger, isn't it? It's bigger. It's more detailed, and it uses um, pinch controls with your fingers. Find a gear? Any gear? <laughs> well, these petrol cars, you know, they do work weirdly, don't they? With clutches and gearboxes. And... <laughs> so, there we go. Um, what else in a car test review should we talk about, Susan? What do you What do you think? What would be important to you in buying the car that we ought to we ought to test? Not to 60 tonne? Is that of interest to you? Is there enough space for the dog? But we've done that already. <laughs> Hello, Bobby. He's very good. Yeah. Are you, what's yeah. that? Oh, you're yeah. feeling sick too. He hasn't thrown us either. <laughs> yet. Oh, dear. No. Crack is finding it okay in the back so far. He's very forgiving, right? But he's looking a bit weird as if he's saying, why aren't I in the boot like normal? Right, an update on efficiency. We've done 8.2 miles so far, and we're at 5.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Very interesting. Got a, got a wave then to the Kona Electric that just went past in Wroxham. Um, so we've got air conditioning on, and we're in normal mode now, so no regen. So it'll be very interesting to see what the efficiency is like on this. But it's gone up to five very quickly. It's very interesting hearing your thoughts on... Um, car because I, I still remember your first drive of any first electric car was in the Renault Zoe and you quite I bonded with that car it. quite yeah. quickly. I loved, I loved it, I just hated the look of it outside. Yeah, whereas this one's the complete opposite of the sound of it. You love the look of it, but you don't like the actual car. Yeah. I, I prefer, I prefer um, this to the, the BMW i3. Um, because the I think I prefer the, the outside look to the BMW i3, but it, this compares very favourably to the um, interior of the BMW i3. I thought the BMW i3 it was like going into a five-star hotel. It was um, it was a really really nice interior. And this is too, isn't it? Yeah. It looks it. But as I was explaining earlier, but there's some of the bits on it are really really oh, cheap, like these sun tacky. visors. The sun visors are a bit tacky, all right, and lightweight. Yeah. But if you love the car, you're going to ignore those sort of things and just focus on the bits you do like. Yeah. And there's plenty, there's plenty to like, as long as you're not a passenger. <laughs> uh, it's actually noticeable as a driver, because I noticed it as a driver that it's a bit choppy. So it, it is quite uncomfortable as a choppy ride in range mode. And we, we've swapped now into normal mode, so we've got no regen, no one metal driving. It's just coasting a lot, and that is more comfortable. But it still rocks and rolls a bit. It's, uh... Yeah, for those of you understanding horses, I'd be wanting a neck strap on this. A <laughs> neck strap. <laughs> and oh, the whining of the motor now is really bugging me. I didn't hear it on my first dress drive, but I can, I can definitely hear it now. Fiat co-driver ready. Turn on and set ACC. That this didn't work before. What's co driver mean? Oh, brilliant! Brilliant! This is um, the autonomous cruise control. So if we set there, if we set this cruise control now at 49 miles an hour, that's what we're driving at. Does it steer? Well, it do like oh, it. Oh, oh, you do. 
before. Yes, it did. It steered. We got it there's, to steer. But there's a bus coming. Right, so it's not as I thought with the steering circle on it. It is with the arrow going forward and the arrow turns green to say that it's going to move. But that wasn't a smooth turn, was it? That was a bit of a lurch, wasn't it? Well, there's so many lurches, you can't tell. Okay, let's go towards the middle. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's okay, cool. so it's self-steering. Yeah. But it's bouncing. For, it's, yeah, place hands on steering wheel, it says. Okay. It's bouncing from side to side. So, okay, it self-steers. But <laughs> not very well. But yeah, this bounces side to side quite heavily. So I think if you summarize a lot of these electronic and EV features. Um, they've bumped a battery in an electric motor and they've got an electric car, but it doesn't look like Fiat are very good at this sort of software game. Okay, another update on efficiency. 15.7 uh, miles into our journey. Um, we are averaging only 32 miles an hour. Uh, it's been quite a slow drive so far. And uh, efficiency, 5.1 miles per kilowatt hour. So not too bad. But you know, 32 miles an hour is quite a low average, and we ha we've been closer to actually city driving than proper A road driving. We haven't really been doing this sort of speed, 50 miles an hour plus, at all. But you know, 5.1 miles per kilowatt hour is not too bad. But again, don't forget these are peak conditions. The battery is warm. It's 23 degrees outside now. It's actually cooled off just a little bit. So um, this really is optimum. This is the best that you're going to get in summer. And, and what price is this compared to the Mini? Top of the range Mini. This is between... Th um, I saw a sticker on the car for this for 30000 but I understand um, they're over 30000 so more than 31 So same price as the um, Level 3 Mini with all the leather seats and the sunroof. But it's got a bigger battery and a bigger advertised range. But yet, you haven't made, got the range to work. Um, well, yeah, if we get five really. miles per kilowatt hour on all of our journeys, times 37, it's 150, it's 185 miles. So yeah, it's got 40 more miles more range, if you drive economically. But from what I've seen, as soon as you start driving faster, normally, the range really drops off and you don't get this efficiency. But that's what we're testing it for, to see. And it's bonging at me, telling me that we're at a 40 mile an hour limit, and we're not. It's a 50 mile an hour limit. Or 60. One of the two. And this bit 60, I think. Which the guy in the showroom did say as well, that the, it often misreads signs, and again he says that's um, glitches in it being an early software version. Is it, is, does it give you the same fun factor as the Mini? No, with it, no. So no, for me personally, um, the thing that appeals about the car is the look. It's not how it drives. You would not buy this for its driving dynamics. I think I said in the earlier video I did, it's, it's very odd because it is a softer ride than the Mini. The Mini's more comfortable, and that's what sort of doesn't make sense. Somehow this is this has got soft suspension, so it moves around and it wallows around. It's softer and hence more pleasurable in some respects, but it seems really harsh and firm on the wheels and tyres. And when it lumps over things, it's unpleasant, and then it is much more choppy, so it's it's not as enjoyable to be in. So no, for me. I mean, the Mini just gives loads of fun, this doesn't. Uh, I'm enjoying the drive. I, I tried to compare it earlier to the Corsa I drove, where the Corsa had nothing really going for it, and yet it was much more comfortable than this. Um, but it just didn't excite any senses at all in you just being sat in it, you looking at it, you driving it. It was a very dull, average car, but being average can be quite good, because it wasn't bad at anything. This car has got some coolness to it, and you don't mind being in it, and you like some of the features of it, but then it's got these things that just um, aren't very good at all. It's certainly got charisma. Um, you know, there 
his style about it. Yeah. But um, you'd have to love it to want to drive it. Really. I agree. Um, the speed recognition signs uh, aren't working. Well, apparently now reckons we're in a 25 limit. <laughs> and it's 40. Wow. So it's it's well yeah, out. Yeah, it, God knows where it's getting these things from. So very software glitchy on that. I hope that this is a pre-production car and that isn't how bad they are with customer ordered cars. But anyway, we're now coming up to a dual carriageway, the A47. So let's test the performance and let Susan experience you, you're not gonna the like horses. Rev it, are you? Rev it? Well, you know. Lurch it forward. Lurch it yeah, forward. Yeah, that's the idea. We're going to go in the outside lane, we're going to overtake. Last crack and ice the back of the yeah, So here we go, so that's foot flat to the floor. That's nowhere near as pokey as the Mini. That's flat to the floor. That's 60 miles an hour. Let's keep going. Flat out. Yeah, still foot flat to the floor. It feels, it feels like it's heaving. Blind spot assist not available over a certain speed that I can't repeat. <laughs> That must be a software glitch, I couldn't have possibly been doing that speed. It doesn't feel as safe at speed either, the Mini's much more... Um, funnily enough, I, I drove one of these a couple of years ago as a hire car, yeah. um, and I found on a dual carriageway uh, they were being blown all over the road. And does that give you the same impression here? Yeah, yeah you, you really maybe, had to hang on to it and it didn't feel stable just that, or wobbly. A, I don't think that's a thing just because it's a little car. I mean, but you're not supposed to be driving it that fast, so. Well, no, but I, I, well, you know me, I drive like Mr. Bean, but um, <laughs> I, I felt um, <laughs> it was being blown all over the road. <laughs> and for those that haven't seen my videos before, Susan's claim to fame is I don't know how she does it, but she's more economical than me in uh, electric cars. I always thought I was a bit of a, a genie at getting efficiency out of cars. But Whatever I do, I can't quite beat Susan's efficiency. She's always 0.1 or 0.2 better, somehow. So I should let her test drive it, and then she can tell you what this thing can really do. Well, that little squirt of acceleration, we're down to 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour now. So it was interesting, driving back from the dealership to home, I'm going to get 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, and Yes, that road is a faster road, so I wasn't getting the same efficiency, but that was where I was saying that the Mini's very similar range. Whereas with this driver we've just done, this car's definitely got a good chunk of range more, um, a good 40 miles more. But the good thing about this car um, is the battery percent and GOM, the distance to empty gauge, appears to give you more confidence and appears to give you a more accurate reading than the Mini. So the Mini scares you to death with telling you you're going to run out of fuel all the time when you're actually not and there's loads in reserve. Um, where this is, looks like it's giving a more accurate number or one that's not scaring you anyway because we've got 61% of battery and it still says we've got 100 miles to go which is almost as much range as you get in the Mini to start with on what it tells you. So yeah, th this car breeds more confidence about range than the Mini. Which is so sad that you have to say that because it's basically it's not about what's real it's about what a number shows on the screen and what that does playing with your mind look at that traffic jam yeah, that's good. is that just because it's slowed down to 40 yeah yeah well that's a welcome to norfolk in the summer with lots of caravans and uh, tailbacks everywhere so what is the nicest <laughs> interior what's the nicest interior that uh, of what? falling away the faster we go. So 
there you go, the range is quite good and you'll get the 190, 199 miles if you poodle around at 30 miles an hour. If you're going to drive up and down dual carriageways at 70 miles an hour, you're going to get closer to the mini range. That's my experience in this test drive anyway. For someone that's really used to driving with regen, driving without it is really weird, having to reach for the brake pedal. Um, that's just because you've changed the mode. Yeah, because I don't want it to be too choppy for you. Yeah, thank you. No, it's, it's really noticeable, the choppy, choppiness. I mean, I'm not being funny. Uh, <laughs> that's the, the deal breaker for me. Okay, so I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope we've provided some information that helps you in your decision or you at least find interesting about this Fiat 500 electric. And uh, all I can say is this is our opinion of the car. Um, if you're interested in the car, then go and test it and see whether you think uh, some of these issues that I've found are there or are not. You might absolutely love it. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and see you again for more videos about solar panels, batteries and electric cars. I am actually testing a Ford Mach-E soon. I've been promised one in July by Ford. So um, it'd be really interesting to get in that car and see what it's like. Take care, see you again soon. Bye for now. Just as a final piece of information, um, obviously on camera we're measuring miles per kilowatt hour from the display on the car. But one of the questions I often ask is, well, is that number correct? Is it accurate? And when you look at these eco scores, which is a different way of presenting the efficiency and uh, trip information in the Fiat 500, they just don't seem to agree. Um, the values here on these eco scores are very odd that the speeds, the average speeds don't look right, the miles per kilowatt hours don't agree with what it displayed on the screen during the driving periods either. So there's something very odd here with the data that's being presented. Again, maybe software issues.